Ciao a tutti. Good, good evening. Hi. Okay, I'm going to make um, a quick a quick video. I'm going to try to make it quick. Um, to answer a post that some friends made, and uh, rather than try to explain it in a comment, I'm just going to try to say it as quickly as possible. The post was about extraterrestrial life or aliens, and... Um, so I'm going to attempt to answer the question that a lot of people maybe have been making, that the world has been making, and that we still entertain with curiosity, uh, or speculate, uh, and say all sorts of things about. And that question is basically, is there life out there in the universe? Are there extraterrestrials, meaning life beyond our world? The question undoubtedly, undoubtedly, should have been answered already long time ago it is yes of course there is there is life out there in the universe now people may ask how do you know this well obviously it has not made itself that i know of to everybody uh, manifested verified itself but we can still answer yes and the way we can answer yes to that question is simple math. Before I get on to a couple of deductions, uh, I should establish philosophically, sort of critical thinking philosophy, that all we will ever have, we will ever have, and has always been the case as far as building our logic, constructing our sciences, um, speculating uh, beyond the world is what we know. We cannot know more than a certain envelope of uh, existential conditions. Even our maths, our sciences that pretend to explain the universe and, and talk about everything concentrating on a, on a single single point, probably as called the Big Bang, probably as it approaches to its most furthest calculations, uh, its most extensive calculations, starts encountering failure, starts encountering limitations that have to do with the logic that our, um, our capacity to understand existence, our, our existence is the same as the universe's existence as so far as our perspective goes. We cannot understand the universe from the perspective of something that contemplates perhaps several galaxies easily um, because a lot of factors we're limited by the, the time in which we can uh, develop reasoning in, in a single lifetime and there are so many limitations that create an envelope as to and so in any ways this is a theory that basically I don't want to indulge in but and I, I really haven't worked it out scientifically because I'm not a scientist but uh, mostly can conceptually but in any case it would it would um, basically disprove that we're a it will it would prove that we're incapable of seeing or understanding the origin of the universe or the beginning of we just don't read it's sort of like the easiest way to imagine this is um, a sm much smaller lifetime, uh, lifetime, um, uh, life form, um, snail, or a little mice, or something. It may have, uh, in the case of a mice, there's a, a huge leap compared to a snail. So let's go even smaller to uh, something smaller than a snail to understand the vast distance, because a mice may have. Uh, small representations of this of things that we can relate to social awareness of its of others of its kind and, and constructing relationships and among its family and clan and things that we uh, understand in our existence uh, are manifested by the brain of small mammals but if we go even further let's say an insect for example an insect does not understand cannot understand that this creature this this being that we are is something that has families and travels and uh, to other parts of the planet 
it is limited by the scope of what it, how it affects its own life. We are all limited by how everything um, affects our own perspective, our own, um, and, and defined the outer world by that perspective upon the, upon the world and other life forms. And so the insect does not reach a, past a certain envelope. Um, it may know, it may have identified these beings that are, uh, it, may, it may see this, it, it, we may be the same elephants, people, dogs, uh, we may be the same as far as the insect is concerned. Okay, in any case, so this concept basically, um, okay, wait, I just got blocked, I'm going to pause it right here. All right, I just recuperated it. Um, explains two things that we have an ultimate limitation upon uh, onto which the universe is comprehensible to us and its origin what we call the Big Bang might be borderline outside that you know um, or it, we may have arrived at something that is sort of the uh, where all our intelligence and logic comes back to one point and it seems to if, if you think about it it seems to be that we created all these sciences and math and, and all these uh, engineering logical um, reasonings of our intelligence. They expand out and they, they perfectly and precisely describe so much of the cosmos around us. And at some point, beyond uh, the scale of light perhaps, our calculations cannot help being subject to their own nature of a dimensional nature and uh, continue to work towards its own fallacy, its own, its own, uh, uh, how can I say this, unavoidable um, limitation or re-encounter. And so the, the theory would be that the Big Bang is, uh, is a production of the limitation, is, is a result of, of the limitations of our intelligence so it sounds like we're calculating everything perfectly and it will always be verifiable and calculable but in reality it's all like on a river flowing someplace that we can't do anything about it ends up rejoining in a point that we can't perceive what is making it uh, fail or, or or reach this finite point anyways that's a theory uh, regarding but that's one thing. And the other thing that it, um, sorry, I know it's already almost eight minutes. The other thing that that proves is, the other thing that this speaks of, I mean, is that um, we only, therefore, understanding this contextually, also says that therefore, we can only put together and understand, it will, and it will only, and it will always only matter what we can put together and deduce what we have to see, what we can verify, what we have to, in order to be able to um, deduce what we don't know still. And it's a lot. It's, we shouldn't feel bad about that because we probably are right about a very small percentage of what our existential, condi our, uh, our, uh, existential our, our bodies can understand about the cosmos. We're probably right about very little compared to all that we could understand about the universe, only given what we are able to know or what we know. Um, so one of those things that we can definitely assert is that we know there are billions and billions of stars. It's such an easy calculation. I mean, I think a lot of people probably thought of it and never understood why isn't anybody saying that then, right? There are billions and billions and billions and billions of stars, and and if one of the, we already know that the world does not produce the universe does not produce one of anything. If you look around, there's not one of anything anywhere. There's not a single sun. There's not a single tree of any species. There's not a single nothing. We already know that the multiplicity is the the first characteristic of all that is perceivable by our existence. Therefore, if one planet, if on one planet arose life, and we're already seeing, you know, the streaks of liquids on Mars, and 
there is, uh, we're not like a freak and everything else is a marble ball. No, we see that um, this continuity exists. Therefore, one can unequivocally conclude that there is life somewhere else. We know this. I don't understand why the, 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 the curiosity format of society continues to be if. <laughs> we already know there is. Why do we need to say we're going to prove that life exists on Mars or wherever? We, I think we can move beyond that and you know, go a few stories up the building and continue from that point on. Um, the next logical conclusion is if beings like us, therefore we can conclude other things like beings such as us definitely exist in other worlds, would have come to exist, have been created by an evolution, an evolution in other worlds. This is also an unequivocal uh, affirmation. We can also deduce that um, that the, the, the forms of life m may be unimaginably this is perhaps a little harder to explain, but when we learn something or how something is done along the process, we learn other things that, in which we say through which when we say, which uh, in which during pr which process we say, uh, I never thought that that's how that worked, or I could I never would have imagined, right? So we all know we know already that this is also a part of existence. We can therefore not speculate what's the point of speculating something that we did not create we did not create the universe what's the point in speculating we were a result life and human fo the human form is a result of of an origin of, of a direction from which it's coming that we don't know so it's pointless to um to say well two eyes or three eyes or you know you know that's um that's just us being insecure from our own perspective what is closer to realism is knowing that there are expressions of life that we could not imagine, that we can't imagine. That is probably closer to truth. So therefore, we already know that there are there is life and there are beings elsewhere in the universe. We already know by just looking at this life on Earth that as soon as we're capable of doing anything beyond the world, we don't leave it alone. We, we don't stay in our planets. We want to travel. We, want, we talk about colonizing. And you look at other creatures on, on the world, uh, in the world, and you see that uh, they want to colonize other, par other continents, and they little you know, rodents travel on trees. And they, everything expands and travels right across the oceans and onto other planets on the universe. So therefore... The next logical conclusion is that where they are, they did not just stay, they're uh, going outwards, whether visually or, or, or perceiving other worlds in a form that we don't understand. The expansive quality of that life form is definitely one of their attributes. Now, what does that mean? Think about it. What does that mean? That the world, if... if Another, okay, before I say that, another fact to consider is how long does a world, how long do, can a world, let's say, last in an area of, of uh, because there are zones in the universe and we can see this in the world. We can learn from the universe by looking at the world or we can, we can project onto laws of life and creation that we see on the world what would happen in the universe and we see that the world does have bands areas for example the ocean where it temporarily it oscillates for example for example if you look at the ocean you have the world the life the world of life underneath the ocean and you have the world of life above it and then there's an ebbing uh, so yes I probably learned this in Hawaii uh, there's an, a zone where only uh, where, where life is particular to that traveling area and some wonderful little things happen there. And so there are bands, there are mollusks, there are, in, in, in nature we see fish that become sort of land and, you know, there's places where something happens and um, when you look, a better example is um, in, a, in a dry desert, 
or um, in a very hard place, you will find that um, maybe in the shady side of mountains, you uh, or um, it, you don't have life, whether it's on the sunny side or the hot side or the cold side of the desert. But wherever there is a stream of water, you may or you might not have such a teeming uh, with life uh, stream of water. It depends uh, on the on how much bacteria and biology that river is able to pick up along the way. Um, there may be fish, there may not be fish. Usually there's something, right? But what we notice is that as soon as a little bit of water spills onto the soil, you see this in the cracks between buildings. Um, um, moth, moth, not moth, uh, moss, and, and lichens and things and little insects that go only to that particular place where the river meets the rock where a stream of water runs down the wall of a building and there all of a sudden you have a little mush little little um, uh, what do you call it a colony of mushrooms that that uh, that uh, settles and and so the universe seems to create these bands of uh, life area and therefore we can safely conclude and this already there talking about it, but people, perhaps it's good to understand what exactly that is, so we can look at the world and make our own uh, discoveries without just believing what NASA and its vocabulary, uh, how its vocabulary explains things. There's a band of life, right? Okay, so in that band of life, you uh, we already established that there is life. Now, the the following fact is, I forgot where why I needed to explain something first, but in any case, the following fact is that essentially we are aware of, I can't conjugate that properly in English uh, without making a longer sentence like we have been discovered, which is not what I want to say. What I want to say is it stands to reason that we have already been made aware of by another species, another life form. This is a fact. You can just rest assured that there's no doubt at all that uh, other life forms know we're here. That we are, okay? So once you get there though, so see, you see we're moving beyond these initial baby questions it's it becomes it becomes a, a harder it becomes more um, how can I say this it requires character and maturity because a lot of things start becoming immediately facts if we go by how we see life treats each other in the world we see how animals will kill each other we see um, how we treat each other and so and, and, and this is not new because as we know our culture talks about oh we're in, especially in Hawaii where I lived for several years they say oh we're, we're, uh, we're bacteria that were cultivated and harvested and because people have made this little path already however there's many other things there's many other things that we can become aware of like for example it would be possible, so many things would be possible and we wouldn't be able to do anything about it, right? We could, our existence could be, we see how we, we ourselves treat each other, we maintain uh, heartlessly our own kind behind concrete walls and we create genocide and as if it is the, the ways of the world. We do it again the following decade and we do it again the following decade. We don't seem to have a problem with that apparent uh, seemingly dis st st describing a stability of our existential condition and so therefore what would stop us from uh, assuming that we too could be living in some kind of hell like we see in those paintings where forever you're uh, you know being used as charcoal for for some greater life form but we're not we we have what we see we have, we are what we see. And so at that point, 
this can go into new forms of theology. But in any case, the question itself, the question itself is answerable. Of course, we are, uh, we were most likely continuing on with, with this reasoning. We are most likely not just aware of, but we are created or we are uh, being run somehow, could be run for something great, beautiful, uh, wonderful, you know, for, for which we should be thankful doesn't mean that we're being run uh, like slaves. It means we, we know maybe uh, our Creator's delight is to see something that, you know, struggling, toiling with the evol evolution, pushing it forward at all costs and killing half of its um, kind as it uh, sufferingly moves forward. And so its pleasure is to give us stuff that we're, uh, do something to us that we, we could never notice was done early on. And it gives us a, a capacity, a dimension to our intelligence that we're all of a sudden blah, 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 can think really quickly, and all of a sudden we can understand what life is, and we start looking around, and and we can understand and, and reach a level of of cognizance that um, we didn't in the form that we were before, and and it's just delighted looking to see what we do, and then maybe they play in a sense that they know that we have a whole process still to go, and so maybe they, in the meantime they. There's other things that happen with our world and, and their creation. Um, because then, of course, there's the aspect of time. Time changes from one uh, dimension, one scale to another. We know animals that only live a few minutes. We know animals that live longer than us. And so this being a, such a great variant... Uh, on the world alone means that it's an enormous variant for sure when we start considering other worlds. So it starts making sense that uh, other life forms that would have created or or um, or um, done something to uh, to the world, you know, who knows? This it's all about distances. It seems that we're. You know, we, our idea is that we're like a colony way out there and nothing's around us. But if you pull back and you notice, sim you may notice similar categories of, of, um, of mammals, let's say, sim a big, like mammals are part of a, a greater family of life, category of life, that occurs in worlds that to us seem like they're far from each other because we can't even see them. But if you pull back far enough, you can see the whole areas of the universe there appearing. And so we could either have been uh, found uh, or looked for to see where we're growing kind of thing and uh, interceded. And, or we could have been, a, you know, at this point, you, you would think such life forms, if we can see, if, if we see how big and how what a huge difference, the, the scale, the difference of scale could be, it seems like it would be easy to just um, interfere with planets because from the moment you factor in that their, uh, their life may be 10 times longer than us or 100 times longer than ours, um, throwing a comet at a, at a world so that it sort of shifts over and it starts receiving light all around it uh, may be not such an un, um, unrealistic project for them. Because they, they, for, what they, for them, it would be like waiting 10 years. Like we wait for a tree to be able to be, um, uh, what do you call it? Choppable for furniture. Um, for them, it's like, okay, we wait 10 years and then you know, pretty soon it will be full of dinosaurs. And, or maybe they plant dinosaurs, they get rid of that phase with another comet. And they bring on, we know there's a lot of stuff that we can start realistically imagining just given what we already know so um, when people ask these questions and I'm not, I'm not I know I'm not alone I know every a lot of people are probably listening to this saying well yeah that's what I always thought right um, maybe we should like my friend um, I forget her name the blonde the blonde the blonde lady from from Italy always just said in this the, one of the reason I'm making I'm making this is because she said something in in um, 
in uh, with the letter A. <laughs> I can't remember it now. <laughs> um, in a in a in a in a post. So it's time, she says. It's time that yeah, it's time. You know, um, it's time because when you start realistically exploring and developing f more than feasible but realistic uh, or concepts of realism let's call them and you realize that um, we are either we are seen created uh, uh, influenced or, 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 or driven somehow you start feeling really really stupid really silly about how bad we are to each other how bad we are how bad we take care of ourselves as a species you start feeling more like like um like a pack of of of, of uh of monkeys or dogs that have been dressed with costume and they don't they don't um uh, they're not aware that the, the audience is making fun of them or is playing and laughing with them you know, it, 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 it starts making you change your perspective and saying how dumb we are then. Because if, if we, essentially, that means that they, you start developing also a action-reaction conversation or thinking. If, if they um, let us make our own world, this is our home. Another fact that we can conclude, for example, thanks to sciences and NASA, is that even if, even if we find another world that's the same size, temperature, da 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 da, so much, it will have a small variation of size, it will have a little bit more of some gas, maybe it has the same um, category condition where all the same elements form in like a, a category of something that can happen. When that happens, it, there's also nitrogen, there's also water, there's also this, there's also da, 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 there's also ozone, there's also everything. And so maybe there are equal category planets out there, but most likely there are by the same logic I said before. There's not just one of anything in the universe. And there may be different categories and there may be many in our category of what can happen to a planet but still, there would be uh, small, small variations of uh, gravity, amount, percentages in the atmosphere. What this would mean is that we take our species and we go over there. Not only are we going to need eventually, let's say that it's very close and we can actually breathe and walk with maybe we notice slightly a little difference in the gravity. Even if it's that identical, in time, our next, our children, as we know, as we already know, it happens here, our children will, st will start being born with problems. So, this makes us realize that this is it. We're not going anywhere else. We're not going anywhere else anytime soon. Even when we learn to travel, we'll still have um, problems to do with our physiology. Even if, let's say, we can go 10 times the speed of light and we wait a a hundred years to get to some some other world somewhere. Um, the the problems of uh, with uh, tinkering with our, are still we're still far from that. We could create a lot of damage if we started trying to do that, uh, messing with our DNA and our genealogy. Uh, so it's safe to say now, uh, taking this putting this down as another premise another thing that we know this is it this is our home we're not leaving here for a while we can maybe explore and send robots you know for a few s centuries but this is where we're going to be living um uh, for a very long time and this conscious the conscious life uh intelligences that are out there are not are just letting us live the way we know from birth to death and not really coming here and you know, eating us like chocolate bonbons or anything. They're just letting us live, and maybe we, they may be doing things that we can't perceive anyways. That makes you realize how dumb, how stupid we are. You know, how, how stupid, there's so many, it's actually quite funny because two things come forth from this. One is how short-sighted, how uh, stupid or short-sighted we are as a species that we would be okay 
with killing our own offspring, for example. I don't know any other uh, life form that does that, that just intentionally for, to, ser to serve the individual or a small group of individuals that murders uh, uh, offspring of its own species. I don't know. Any, may, there may be some natural or origin traces to that, but but the point is not that how much we can draw similarities uh, and find smaller scale uh, extensions into smaller species or uh, the animal kingdom. The point is that what we have, to see, that's that's where it all. That's where the beauty is. What we have, which is different, is this amazing leap of intelligence compared to um, my dog's having a nightmare it's having or maybe it isn't a nightmare uh, seeing that we have that ability to cure dis our own diseases which no animal no other life form can do other by then by its own their own healing mechanisms and then realizing well if if an intelligent form is aware of, that means that it wants us to have this intelligent or intelligence different to all to the rest of the living world, or it made it into it's an intention. It's what they gave us, let's say. And so that we're not using it in in, in contrast to uh, if we don't see its use, we're dumb again. We're stupid again because we don't see that. Precisely, its gift must be then to uh, be able to have an optimal existence of, of not letting anybody get sick, you know, and, and everything and, and dominating the forces of the world, floods and earthquakes and droughts in a way that no other animal is able to defend themselves. We kind of do, but we do a small percentage. We're not really embracing with, with elation and, and gratefulness that that what we're actually been given or allowed to to exist with. Um, in any case, uh, that's basically it. I don't know if that actually answers the question. It's all, it's been thirty minutes. I apologize for anybody that felt they were being patient. Uh, there's just so much to expand from this from that from this era from this point. There's just so much more that you could I could not possibly remember all right now but once you move forward on affirming conclusions as such uh, for example you know you, you acquire responsibility you require other new realistic platforms from which to go on from but one thing I remember thinking um, I was so engrossed in the realism of these conclusions, of these deductions when I was much younger, that I, at one point I actually got scared because I realized, well, look at how how nature, um, you know, treats its own kind often. Look at what we do. Um, it's almost like I, I, I became dispelled of the the fantasy of not knowing the fantasy of not caring to really believe what could be true the sort of the lala state in which a lot of things are said but what do we really know anyways and uh, that got dispelled and all of a sudden i realized i started I, I started looking you know like wait a second that means that you know <laughs> i had one of those moments and um it was a little fearful and then from that point I went on and on and on and I started seeing also that there's a lot of stuff that seems to be in scripture that um, is like waiting there to tell us <laughs> all this time you misinterpreted that and but wait now that you know that now that you figure out this think about this see how this applies now differently and it's actually perhaps good news or you can it can help you along instead of thinking that it meant all this other stuff. Um, everything is intentional in the world if if we're if 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 indeed not if since since indeed there is um, so much greater life all around us in the universe. It's like saying. Um, 
in a sense, um, some species of fish have it easy and um, live without uh, being fished, um, fished because we want that to be the case. In a sense, it's true. We want. We have not discovered that they that it's that they taste good and they haven't become a part of the fishing industry. And is that not ultimately? That's kind of why Scripture says you have dominion over the animal kingdom. But you know, the, it's all been uh, misinterpreted because upon realizing how much we have, um, one can easily tend. One can easily easily um, reinterpret positively scripture and say and and realize what a gift it is that we have dominion for example over the animal kingdom because that means that we can have it be healthier for uh, our home to be healthier and uh, it rejoice or give joyce or give um, pleasure to our soul by having them live freely and there's so many things that um, uh, could be the case thanks to the fact that we have dominion over the animals. Of, of, so it only you know you can look at it the other way. But how are we ever going to uh, have the perspective of positivity and and happiness for the the gift of uh, that we have of these ninety years of life if we believe uh, a misinterpreted version? Of scripture that says you know that we are to be punished because we you know we're just messed up and we go for the apple and we you know we we have sin and all this stuff you know and everything that was referenced in scripture may have had to be referenced but differently in other words we uh, the interpretation was created by us we also wrote stuff but let's just say that um, it was made so that we would write things, let us interpret it whatever, however way we did while we weren't ready to, so that we can later own it and say, let's look at what we wrote again and see if we can, since it was intended for us to write that, now we can reinterpret it differently. And a lot of scriptures actually like that. You start looking at it and you go, well, what if let's say for example one one thing I did and this is very green this is very new age kind of uh, uh, new ecology sciences uh, Jonathan Lovelock um, one thing you could easily do for example is in scripture I tried this and often if you look at scripture you, you you can if you get into that mindset and you change your perspective and put it all the way there you start seeing things that that meaning uh, you start Sometimes under, um, being really good at how others interpret it as well, and sometimes you see it completely different. One thing I did, for example, was put God in the place of Gaia, or Earth, which is our home. And so then you read stuff, and you go like, you know, to please God... Um, um, I, can't, I can't think of right now, but you realize... It makes sense also. It doesn't deny. It doesn't deny um, being grateful to creators or to God or being of service to God. For example, when you uh, substitute Gaia for God, and all of a sudden you're uh, praising or you're learning from Jesus. For example, you're learning from the te Jesus was three in one, right? Not even going to go there right now, but um, he was a teacher and also a man. A man. He was God. Anyways, I don't want to get into understanding the uh, the, the trilogy, this, the divine trilogy, or however you call that. Divine. Can't think right now. Okay, I'm on a one track mind. But if you learn from God, you learn from Gaia, and that is nothing new because. Ecological sciences uh, are totally based on having discovered better ways of eating and medicine and everything by seeing how nature took care of things. Anyways, okay, so I hope I did more than answer the question. I'm sorry, 40 minutes. Oh my God, okay. So long. Thanks for listening.